Hello students, welcome to business mathematics class. In this class, we will be discussing about determinants. Now, before going to determinants, we must know what is a matrix, right? So, as you can see in the slide, a matrix is a rectangular arrangement of elements in rows and columns and it is denoted by a capital letter, say A or B. So, let us take a look at the whiteboard. Now, if I ask you to write 1 to 9 in rows and columns, you write it like this and if I put two brackets in between, then it is, it becomes a matrix and every matrix has an identity. So, let us say this is matrix A, right. Now, coming back to the slide, what is a determinant? Now, determinant is the numerical value that is obtained from a square matrix. Now, when we associate a number or a value to a square matrix, it is called as a determinant. Now, what is a square matrix? A square matrix is a matrix that has equal number of rows and columns, right? That means, the number of rows equals to the number of columns. Now, in the next slide, you can see I have given you some examples of three matrices. Now, they are of different orders. Orders, you know, order is the number of row and the number of column. So, the first matrix has only one element. That means, it has only one row and one column, right? So, the order of the matrix is 1 by 1. Similarly, another square matrix, the following one, it is a matrix of order 2, where there are 2 rows and 2 columns. Similarly, next one, order 3, where there are 3 rows and 3 columns, right? Now, if A is a square matrix, then the determinant of that matrix is written as DET, the short form of determinant, A, the matrix identity, or you can write A in between 2 vertical lines, or you can put the delta sign. So, the delta sign is a small triangle shaped sign. It is the symbol for determinant, right? Okay. Now, let us find out the ways of finding out the determinant of matrices. Let us start with matrix of order 1. Now, order 1 means there are uh, one, there is only one row and one column. That means, it has only one element. So, you can see in the slide, it is written first order determinant where there is one row and one column and it consists of only one element. Now, in a matrix of order 1, the determinant is the element itself. That means, whatever lies in lies in the matrix is the determinant value, right? Now, let us go to the next slide. It is to find out the determinant of a matrix of order 2. Order 2 means there are 2 number of rows and 2 number of columns, right? So, how many elements are there? There are 4 elements. Now, the value is determined by multiplying the elements of the principal diagonal and from there subtracting the product of the elements of the opposite diagonal. So, as you can see in the diagram, so if A is a matrix, so there are position of each element. So, you can see the matrix consists of 4 elements A11, A12, A21, A22. So, A11 means 1 1 signifies the position of the element. So, 1 signifies row position, uh, other 1 signifies the column position. So, A 1 1 means first row, first column. A 2 3 means second row, third column, right? So, here in a matrix of order 2, how do we find out the determinant? Now, we multiply the principal diagonal elements first. So, let us say the principal diagonal elements are, so the first element row, row, uh, the diagonal element is the principal diagonal elements, right? So, A11 to be multiplied with A22 and subtracting therefrom the opposite diagonal elements. So, you can see in the diagram, it is very well represented next. Now, I have taken some examples as you can see. So, this matrix or this uh, determinant consists of 6, minus 1, 9 and 4, right? Now, how do we find out the determinant? Let us take a look in the blackboard, right? So, if I have to find out the value of this determinant, so it is written 6, minus 1, 9 and 4, right? So, first I have to take the product of the principal diagonal. So, how do we know which one is the principal diagonal? So, we see the first element, right, and its diagonal, they form the principal diagonal elements, right? So, 6 and 4. So, we take the product of 6 into 4 and therefrom we subtract the product of the opposite diagonal, right? So, minus 
minus 1 into 9, right. So, then we find out the product. So, this is 24 and this is minus 9. So, when we add it up, it becomes 33, right. So, this is how we find out the determinant of a matrix of order 2, right. So, let us take a look at the slide. Similarly, another example I have given you in the slide, you just have to cross multiply the diagonal elements. So, the answer is 7, right. Now, next, how do we find out the determinant of a matrix of order 3? Order 3 means there are 3 rows and 3 columns, right. So, basically there are 2 methods. One is the Saris expansion method, another one is the expansion method using any row or any column. So, we will start with the first method that is the Saris expansion method, right. So, now, Saris was a mathematician. He developed a very simple method to find out the value of determinant of a matrix of order 3, right. Now, as you can see in the slide, uh, there are 4 steps, right. Now, I will I'll give you an example. I will show you with the help of an example how to find out the determinant value of a matrix of order 3 using the Saris expansion method, right. Now, let us take this example. Let us say, I have to find out the, det the determinant value of this, this uh, determinant, right. Now, what is the first step as you can see in the slide? Repeat the first two columns and add it to the determinant to make five columns. So, here what we do? We repeat the first two columns and add it to the next, uh, to the last of the third column, right. So, we repeat. So, this we repeat 1, 4, 7, again we repeat this column 2, 5 and 8, right, ok. What is the next step? The next step is you have to find the product of the, di of the diagonal elements, right, going downwards, starting from the top, going downwards and you have to find the diagonal product of all the parallel diagonals lying to each other. That means, so, this is the first diagonal. So, let us take 1 into 5 into 9, then add it to the next parallel diagonal. So, that is 2, 6, 7, 2 into 6 into 7, then add it to the next parallel diagonal, that is 3 into 4 into 8, right. So, what do we do? we took the product of the three parallel diagonals going downwards, right. Now, we add it up and therefrom we subtract the product of the upwards uh, diagonals, right, upward diagonals. So, starting with 7 into 5 into 3 plus 8, 6, 1. plus 9, 4, 2, right, right. So, we add this product, therefore, we subtract the product of the opposite, uh, the uh, upwards diagonals, right. And whatever answer we get, that is the determinant value, all right. So, we can take a look at the next slide to have a better understanding of the Saris expansion method. So, let us take a look at the slide. Let us say, we have the determinant a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. So, what is the first step? The first step is we repeat the first two columns and add it to the determinant to make it five columns. So, so first two columns are repeated as you all can see. Then what do we do next? We take the product of the diagonals starting from up, uh, top to bottom and then bottom to top, right. It is well illustrated in the slide as you can see, right then we take the difference of both the products. So, this is how we find out the determinant value using the Saris expansion method. So, let us now go to the next method of finding out the determinant of a matrix of order 3, right. So, earlier we know the other method was Saris diagram method. Now, this is the expansion method using any row or any column. So, let us take a look at the slide. Now, we know in a third order determinant, we have 3 rows and 3 columns, there are 9 elements. 
Now, we must know that every element has a positional sign that means, the sign of the position that it lies. Right? Now, how do we know what is the position sign of the element? Now, let us take for example, A 1 1. So, when I say A 1 1 that means, uh, first row, first column. Now, what do we do? We add the row number and column number to find out the value. Now, 1 plus 1 means 2. So, if the resultant value is an even number, the sign is positive that means plus. When the resultant value is negative uh, or number, then the sign is negative or minus. Right? So, as you can see in the slide, it can be determined by the position of the element. If the row number plus column number equals to even number, then the sign is plus and if it is an odd number, then the sign is minus. Right? Now, so for an order 2 determinant, as you can see in the slide, when I take A 1 1, so 1 plus 1 means even number, so the sign, so it is 2, so 2 is an even number, so the sign becomes positive plus. Similarly, A 1 2, so 1 plus 2 3, so the sign becomes, uh, uh, the resultant is odd number, so the sign becomes minus. Similarly, A 2 1 minus, A 2 2 plus, for an order 3 determinant, same rule. So, even number means plus or number means minus. right? So, the easiest way to remember is to remember the diagram plus minus minus plus for order 2 and plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus plus the order for order 3 uh, the positional signs for the order 3 determinant. right? Okay. Now, how do we use the expansion method? right? Now, there are uh, some steps to be followed. Now, let us take a look at the slide. Now, the value can be found out by expanding the elements by any row or column with the positional sign and multiplying with its determinant. Now, in an order 3 determinant, we know there are 3 rows and 3 columns. So, we can expand it by taking any row or any column. So, we can take row 1, row 3, column 2, column 3. So, basically, there are 6 ways of finding out the value of the determinant. So, there are 9 elements, right? So, here we must remember, we must convert it to a second order determinant of the elements that we take along the row that we are expanding. For example, if we are expanding the first row, the so first row, so when we take the first element of the first row, so we must take the positional sign of the element, the element and also the second order determinant that we find out by deleting in which the element lies. Right? Now, for example, take a look at the slide. Now, generally we expand it, we find the value of the determinant by expanding along the first row. Generally, we take the first row, but the answer will be the same irrespective of any row number or row any column you expand. Right? So, let us say this is the determinant A. So, as you can see the signs, the positional signs are mentioned above plus minus plus. So, when we are taking the first row, now we have to think, now you see then the determinant of A is. So, A 1 1 is the first element. What is the positional sign of A 1 1? Plus. So, plus A 1 1 and we take the determinant that of that element. Now, how do we find out the determinant of that element? We see A 1 1 lies in a particular row and column. So, we delete that row and that column in which the element lies and the resultant elements is the determinant of that element that we take into consideration. So, as you can take a look into the slide, you can understand it better. So, when first row consists of A 1 1, A 1 2 and A 1 3. So, when we take A 1 1, we are deleting the row and column in which A 1 1 res, uh, resides and the resultant is A 2 2, A 2 3, A 3 2, A 3 3. Similarly, when we take A 1 2, again A 1 2 uh, lies in a particular row and column. So, we are deleting the row and column in which the element lies and the resultant elements is the determinant of that. So, what we are doing? We are converting the third order determinant into second order determinants to find out the values. right? And then we know how to find out the value of a second order determinant. We cross multiply the diagonal elements and thereby getting the value of the determinant. Now, let us understand it better with the help of an example. Right? Okay. Now, let us take this example. Let us take this example. So, 
So, this is the determinant. Now, we have to find out the value of this determinant with the help of the expansion method. So, generally like I said we take the expansion of the first row. Now, let us take the first row. So, we are expanding along the first row, row 1 right. Now, how do we do it? So, we take three things first. We take the positional sign. So, first row. So, the first row positional sign is plus, minus and plus. So, we take the positional sign, then the element right and then we take the determinant that we get after the taking into consideration the element that in which it lies right. So, how do we get the second order determinant of the element? We delete the row and the column in which the element lies right. So, one lies in this row and this column. So, the resultant elements are the second order determinant that we get. So, 5, 6, 8, 9 right. Similarly, the second element what is the sign? Minus the positional sign, the element and then the second order determinant. How do we get it? We delete the row and the column in which it lies. So, 4, 6, 7, 9 are the resultant elements. So, 4, 6, 7 and 9 right. Similarly, next element is 3, the positional sign is plus. So, plus 3 and then how do we get the uh, determinant? So, we delete the row and the column in which it lies and the resultant elements is the second order determinant. So, 4, 5, 7, 8 right. Now, we know how to find out the determinant of a second order. So, we just do that. So, we cross multiply the diagonal elements and then we take the difference. So, 5 into 9 45, 6 into 8 48 right. Similarly, 4 into 9 36. 6 into 7, 42, right. Again, 4 into 8, 32, minus 5 into 7, 35, right. So, we get minus 3, this is minus 2, minus 6, so plus 12, and this is 3 into minus 3, min, uh, minus 9, right. So, the resultant is 0, right. So, this is the value of this determinant, this is the value of the determinant right. So, here what we are doing we are expanding along row 1. Now, like I said there are 6 ways that means since there are 3 rows and 3 columns we can expand it along whichever line we want to, but the result in the value will be the same. Now, let us prove this, let us see if the value comes the same or not right. Now, if I am expanding along column 1, column 1 means here this one right. So, column 1. So, first the same steps we have to follow. So, the positional sign is plus, minus and plus right. So, we take positional sign, the element and the second order determinant that we get. Now, how do we get it? Same method, we delete the row and column in which it lies. So, the resultant elements are 5, 6, 8, 9 right. Similarly, positional sign minus. So, we are expanding along column 1 remember. So, minus sign positional sign element is 4. Now, what is the second order determinant that we get? We delete the row and the column in which it lies. So, what are the resultant? 2, 3, 8, 9. So, 2, 3, 8, 9 is the second order determinant that we get by taking into consideration element 4. Last one positional sign is plus and element is 7 same second order determinant will be 2, 3, 5, 6 right. Now, simple how we find out the value of the second order determinant. So, we get 45 minus 48, this is 18 minus 24 plus this is 12 minus 15. So, we get minus 3 minus 4 minus 6 is minus 24, this 7 into minus 3 is minus 21. So, what is the resultant answer? The resultant is 0 again, right, right. So, that is the value of the determinant. So, whether we expand it along R1 or column 1, the resultant will be the same, right, okay. Now, let us get back to the slide. 
So, let us look at some other examples as you can look into the slide. So, here is another determinant where we have find, uh, found out the determinant value using the expansion method along the row 1. So, row 1 has elements as you can see 2, minus 3 and 1. So, here we have taken the positional sign as well as the elements. So, first element is 2 where the positional sign is plus 2 and again we have found out the second order determinant of the element. Again we can see in the slide minus 3 here the positional sign after taking into consideration becomes plus 3. So, minus minus 3 then the second order determinant of the element and then again finally the last element of row 1 that is 1 and the position sign is plus alongside the second order determinant that we found out by using the element right. So, this is how you solve it and we get the answer as 49 right 1. So, here we have to be careful about three things first is the positional sign the element and the determinant the second order determinant that we get by using the element into consideration right. So, here as you can see in your screen the answer is minus 52 ok. So, let us do a quick revision of what we discussed today. So, we discussed about what is the determinant. Now, determinant is basically a numeric value that is obtained from a square matrix. So, a square matrix is basically where the number of rows must be equal to the number of columns. Then how do we find out the determinants of different different orders? So, order 1 where there is one element that means one row and one column. Here the value of the determinant is the element itself and secondly how do we find out the value of a uh, matrix of order 2? Let us see. So, if I take this example 5, 6, 3, minus 2, right. So, how do we find out the determinant value? We multiply the diagonal elements and take the difference therefrom, right. So, 5 into minus 2, then therefrom taking the difference 3 into 6 into 3. So, minus 10, minus 18, we get minus 28, right. So, this is how we find out the determined value of a order 2, right. Now, how then we have uh, revised about, then we spoke about the determinants method uh, to find out the value of determinants by using Cyrus expansion method and also expansion along the row or column, right. In Cyrus expansion method, what we did? We uh, extended the determinant by repeating the first two columns and adding it to the right to the determinant and then we multiplied the downwards diagonals and then we therefrom taking the sub, uh, difference from there of the upwards diagonal we find out the value of the determinant. Then another method we discuss about the expansion method where for example, we took 1, 2, 3, 3, 1, 4, 4, 1, 2. So, how we ex, uh, find out the value of the determinant by either expanding along the row rows or expanding along the columns right. So, this is how we find out the value of a determinant of a matrix of order 1, order 2 and order 3 right. So, in the following classes we will discuss more about determinants. So, the next class we are going to discuss about the properties of determinants and how we can use these properties to simplify our calculation and solve determinants problems. In the earlier class, we have discussed about what is a determinant, how to find out the value of a determinant of order 1, 2 and 3. So, in this class, we will proceed to the next topic that is the properties of determinants. Now, what do you mean by properties? Properties are basic rules that help you to solve problems of determinants. That means, they simplify the calculation, they make things easier. So, we are going to discuss about these properties and how we can use these properties to simplify to find out the value of the determinant right. So, let us take a look at the slide. So, the first property is the value of the determinant remains unchanged if both rows and columns are interchanged. So, now let me explain to you better. Now, I will take an example of order 2. Let us say this is the determinant ok. Now, if I have to find out the value of the determinant, we all know how to find out the value of a determinant of order 2. We multiply the diagonals and 
find the difference and the value is the determinant. So, this is 70, 8 into 9, 72. So, the value is minus 2, right. Now, the property says that the value will remain unchanged. That means, the same value will be there even if we interchange the rows into columns or the columns into rows. So, let me change the rows into columns. So, let us say if I put 7, 8 in the column, again 9, 10 here. So, now let us find out the determinant value 70, 7 into 10 minus 9 into 8, 72. So, see the same value. So, that means if we interchange the rows into columns or the columns into rows, the value will remain unchanged, right. Now, let us take the same property and explain it with the help of a order 3 determinant, right, ok. Ok. So, let me see. So, if I take an order 3 determinant, and let us find out the determinant of this order. So, we have all discussed in the earlier class how to find out the determinant of an order 3 matrix. So, if I am expand, now I see there is a 0 in row 2. So, I have told you already that try to take a row or column where 0 is there, so that it will simplify your calculations. So, if I expand row 2, right. So, now row 2 means you have to be careful with the positional signs. So, this is minus, this is plus and this is minus, right. So, minus 6, the element and the determinant I have told you to delete the row and column in which the element exits. So, that means minus 3, 5, 5, minus 7, right, 0. So, 0 positional sign is plus 0. So, the ultimate result will be 0, but still for your understanding I am putting the determinant elements. So, here, so this is the row and column. So, the resultant elements are 2, 5, 1, minus 7, right. Now, we take the third one, the positional sign is minus, minus 4 and the determinant that we get by deleting the row and the column in which the element exits, 2, minus 3 and 1 and 5, right. Now, we do the calculation. So, minus 6, this is 21 minus 25 plus the result will be 0 because 0 multiplied with 0 is 0, minus 4, here we get 10, minus 3 minus 3, so it becomes plus 3, right. So, here we get minus 6 into minus 4, that is 24, right, plus 0 and here we get minus 4 into 13, that is 52. So, we get minus 52. So, the resultant is minus 28. So, this is the determinant of this is the value of this determinant. Now, if we, we use the property, that means it says that if we interchange the rows into columns or the columns into rows, the value will remain unchanged. Now, you remember the determinant value has come to minus 28. So, now let us interchange the row into column. Now, for your, for, uh, for your understanding, I will write down the determinant value over here. So, that we remember it is minus 28. Now, if I change this row into this column, that means I change row 1 to column 1. So, I write 2 minus 3, 5, 6, 0, 4, 1, 5, minus 7. So, I have interchanged the rows to columns and the columns to rows. Now, I am expanding, let us say, which one do you want? Let us say row 1. So, I am expanding row 1 and trying to find out the value of the determinant. So, this positional signs plus minus plus, right. So, 2 again, so we know this already, how to convert it to a second order determinant, minus 6. So, here 3 
minus 3, 5, 5 and minus 7, here plus 1. So, this second order determinant minus 3, 0, 5 and 4, right. We do the calculation minus 20, here we get 21 minus 25, here we get minus 12 minus 0, right. So, here we get minus 40, minus 6 into minus 4 plus 24 plus this is minus 12. So, again the result you can see minus 52 plus 24. So, the result is same, right. So, here the property is hence proved. So, if, if it is order 2 determinant or order 3 determinant, the, the property remains true that if we change interchange the rows into columns or the column into rows, the value will remain the same. So, earlier also we found out the value was minus 28. So, here also after interchanging the value remains the same, right. So, hence prove property 1. Now, let us go to the next property. As you can see in the slide, it is written that if any two adjacent rows or columns of a determinant are interchanged, then the sign of the determinant changes, right sign of the determinant changes ok. Now, let me explain it with the help of your example ok. Let me take the same example 7, 8, 9, 10. I am taking an order to determinant for simplification. Let us say 10 ok ok. How to find out the value of a second order determinant? We have already discussed 7 into 10 minus 8 into 9. So, that is 70 minus 72 the answer is minus 2, right. Now, the property says that if any two adjacent rows are changed or any two columns, right, are changed. In the first property, the rows were changing into columns or the columns were changing into rows. But here it is saying row 1 will become row 2 or row 3, column 1 will become column 2 or column 3. So, there is interchange between rows and columns, not interchange among them, right. So, let us say here row 1 will become row 2. So, I am placing 7, 8 in row 2. So, 9, 10 here and 7, 8 in row 2, right. So, now 9 into 8, 72, 10 into 7, 70. So, the value is same, but the sign has changed. That means, here it was minus and here it has become plus 2. So, now the property is understood. That means, if any two adjacent rows, so if row 1 will become row 2, the value will remain the same, but the sign will change. So, you have to remember that if the rows are becoming into columns, the value remains the same. But if there is interchange between rows or C1 will become C2 or C3, then the value remains the same, but the sign will change, right. So, here in the property 3, we discussed that if in a determinant, any two rows or columns are identical, then the value becomes 0. So, I already showed you that in a determinant of order 2, if row 1 is equal to row 2, equal to means the corresponding elements are same, then the resultant is 0. Now, similarly, if I show you in the with the help of a determinant of order 3, let us say 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 2, th 1, 2, 1, right. So, here we can see that row 1 is same as row 3, right. Now, let us find out the determinant. So, we know how to find out the determinant. We let us say we are taking row 1, we are expanding it. So, this positional signs are plus minus plus. So, we get the second order determinant by expanding the first row elements 2, 4, 1, 1. Then again element 1 has the second order determinant as 2, 2, 1, 2 right. So, here we get 2 minus 8, here we get 2 minus 4, here we get 4 minus 2 right. So, here we get minus 6 minus 2 into minus 2 that becomes plus 4 and here we get plus 2. So, the resultant is minus 6 plus 6. So, 0. So, hence proved. So, that means, if in a determinant, the row or the column, 
right they have identical twins that means the corresponding elements of another row or column are same then the value comes to 0 right ok now let us go to the next property. Now the property 4 says if each element of a row or a column of a determinant is multiplied by a constant k then the value of the determinant becomes the k times the original determinant right ok. Now let me show you with the help of an example ok. Let us take order 2 determinant right ok. Now here I am taking 3, 2, 5, 6 right. So, what is the value of the determinant? 3 into 6, 18 minus 2 into 5, 10. So, here it is 8, right? Okay. Now, the property says that if in any row we multiply it with the with a constant, that means any row or any column, but all the elements of the row or the column. Let us say if I am multiplying row 1 becomes k row 1 here the k is the constant let us say I am multiplying row 1 elements with 2 right. So, now the new determinant will be 2 r 1 elements. So, 2 into 3 again 2 2 into 2 right same row 1 will be the same right. So, 5 and 6 remember whenever you are multiplying the constant you must multiply it with a single row or a single column you cannot multiply with all the elements here then the rule will change because it will not become 2 it will become 2 if you are multiplying with all the elements let us say 4 elements means 2 into 2 it becomes 4 2 square. So, it does not hold true. So, remember you have to multiply the elements of a single row all the elements of single row or all the elements of a single column. So, here the resultant elements is 6 here 4, here 5 and 6 cross multiply 36 here minus 20, 16. Now, what does the property say? Now, if you multiply any row or any column with a constant, so here the constant is 2, then the value of the determinant will change to k times the original determinant. So, the original determinant value is 8 constant is 2. So, here 8 into 2. So, the value is 16. Got it? Now, you can use it in a determinant of order 3 as well and you are going to get the same result. Right? Okay. Now, let us go to the next property. Property 5 says that if every element of a row or column of a determinant is expressed as the sum or difference of two terms then the determinant can be expressed as sum or difference of the two determinants right. Now, what does it mean? Now, let us see with the help of an example. Here we are going to take a order 3 determinant. Now, it is in the property it is told that if every element in a determinant or every element of a row or a column is shown as a uh, sum of or difference of two terms that means there are two terms in a particular row or in a particular column. Let us say a plus b, c plus d, e plus f. So, here in row 1 there are two terms a and b and the algebra is plus right. Now, in the remaining elements g h i j k l right. So, according to the property you can split this into two determinants that means you can write it as a c e g or uh, the remaining elements remaining the same i j k l. Here the algebra is plus so sum so plus the next term right. So, B D F again the remaining elements remaining the same G H I and J K L right. So, here we have split the single determinant into two determinants. Now, remember in matrices 
the how we add or subtract we for example if this is one matrix and this is another matrix let's say with a and b so this is another matrix let's say 5 6 7 8 in matrices so how do we add in matrices we add the corresponding elements like this like 1 plus 5 2 plus 6 3 plus 7 and 4 plus 8 this is how we add in matrices we add the corresponding elements with the other matrix right and the resultant is the 6 8 12 and 12 so this is the additive value of the two matrices but in determinants that is not how you must add that means whenever we are splitting the determinants into two then you have to find out the value of this determinant and then add the value of the other determinant that you derive so we do not add the corresponding elements but we find out the value of the determinant and then we find out the value of the other determinant and then we add the uh, determined values to get the final value right ok. Now, let us go to the next property. Now, the last property says that if any row or column of a determinant a multiple of any other row or column is added or subtracted then the value of the original determinant remains the same. Now, what does it mean? Now, let me show you an example. Let me take the example of an order 2 determinant. Okay. 2, 3, minus 2, 4. Okay. All right. Now, the determinant value is how much? 2 into 4, 8, minus 3 into minus 2 is minus 6. So, the resultant value is 14. Now, the property says that if any row or column we add a multiple of another element of any other row, what does it mean? Now, you know this is row 1 and this is row 2, right. If I write that row 1 means row 1 plus 2 r 2, that means here we are adding the multiples of another element of another row and making a new element right. So, the new determinant will be, so row 1 will now become, will follow this equation that means row 1 plus 2 row 2 element. So, here 2, 2 plus 2 r 2. So, what is the row 2 element minus 2? So, here 2 into minus 2 right. Again next element that is the next element of the same row 3. So, we write 3 plus 2 r 2, the element is 4, so it will be 2 into 4, right. Row 2 will remain the same, that is minus 2 and 4, ok. Now, how much this is? 2 minus 4, that means this is minus 2, 2 plus minus 4, right. This is 3 plus 8, 11, this is minus 2 and this is 4 ok. So, here we get how much minus 2 into 4 is minus 8 minus this is minus minus this will become plus 22 resultant will be the same right. So, did you see the property getting true that means if we are adding or subtracting if I had been minus then the same thing the value would have not changed right. So, according to the property if any multiple of any row or column is added or subtracted the value of the original determinant remains the same all right. Now, if we use the same property in an order 3 determinant like say for example, this problem we have already discussed it we have found out the determinant to be minus 28. Now, remember if I say row 1 is row 1 plus 2 r 2 that means here I have used a multiple of another element of another row. So, if I convert it let us say so 2 so row 1 is now row 1 plus 2 r 2 so that is 2 plus the corresponding row 2 element that is 2 into 6 here again minus 3 plus 
2 into 0 again here 5 plus 2 into 4 right and the remaining elements remaining the same. So, 6 0 4 1 5 minus 7. Now, remember even if we use it in an order 3 determinant the resultant will be the same. You may solve it and find out the result for yourself. Okay? So, here we have discussed about 6 properties of determinants. We can also add another property of determinant here which says that if in any row or any column of a determinant there are only zeros that means the elements are only zeros then the value of the determinant also comes to zero. Now, what is the importance of the properties? Now, basically the properties are there to use to make our calculations and solve uh, solutions easier, simpler. That means, if there is a determinant whether uh, elements are of two figures, three figures. So, how do we make it simpler? We can make two uh, rows or columns identical or we can interchange the rows and columns or we can make one column or one row only zeros. So, the value will become zero. Right? So, basically these properties are used to make our determinants, make our calculations easier and simpler. Right? So, now let us do a quick recap of what we have studied so far. So, we have discussed what is a determinant, how to find out the value of a determinant of a matrix of order 1, order 2 and order 3. We have discussed in order to find out the determinant value of a order 1, then the value is the element itself order 2 there is we are finding out the product of the diagonal elements, finding out the difference and then the determinant. Order 3 we have two methods the Saris expansion method and also the expansion method by usage of any row or column and finally, the 6 properties that we have discussed. So, in the, in the following classes we are going to discuss how to find out the minors, the cofactors and the use of Kramer's rule. Thank you.